my first grade friends. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all doing well. And I miss you guys all so much. Seeing you guys at library and listening to your stories. Oh, I hope we get to do that sometime soon. But we are going to continue our story here. Uh, Dolphins at uh, Daybreak. A magic treehouse story. We have Jag and Annie who went into the treehouse. And they're trying to solve a riddle. Um, to help um, the uh, librarian, what is her name, Morgan, um, find, uh, solve a mystery. And they uh, landed on the beach right here in their treehouse. And Annie starts to walk and she sees a uh, submarine that is on the beach, um, by, by the beach. So she decides to go inside and Jack follows her. Annie, of course, starts pushing some buttons, and then uh, the submarine takes off. <gasps> I don't know what they if they know what they're doing, but um, they started some pushing some buttons, and then they're in the ocean on the ocean floor, rather, looking at all the beautiful fish. Remember, we said to close our eyes and imagine beautiful blue, uh, orange, yellow, green fishies, purple fish all kinds of uh, fish. Imagine, I said, if you're watching uh, Finding Nemo or Finding Dory, uh, remember all the fish in the ocean, how beautiful it is in their homes. Uh, imagine those, or if you're at, if you've been to the Shedd Aquarium, and then two, <coughs> excuse me, my friends, <coughs> two dolphins came up to their uh, submarine and uh, said hello to them. It looks like they're smiling at them. Oh, excuse me, my friends. And then um, they um, noticed that there was a message. They found a journal. And the journal says oh, there is a crack in the submarine. Not good. And that the crack was getting bigger. And that whoever that wrote the journal said that they had to abandon means it's so bad that he could not take it he was rescued off the island however the um submarine is so cracked and so uh broken that he could not save it and they're like where the submarine oh no and that's what we left off last week where um he says oh no oh that's right there was an octopus that was looking at them and then the octopus, the arms came out, one arm, then another arm, then another arm, ah, reaching out to them at their submarine. And he says, he's coming after us, said Annie. Slowly, the octopus crept through the water. It's eight arms, reach for the mini sub. Oh no, let's pick up there, okay? Chapter six, crack. The octopus hugged the mini sub. Each of its eight arms had two rows of suckers. It was like little suction things. They grab fish and other things with those suction things. The suckers stuck to the windows. The mini sub stopped. The octopus stared at Jack and Annie with huge human-like eyes. I don't think it wants to hurt us, whispered Annie. It's just curious. Oh, I hope she's right. Maybe they're just curious and uh, he's just curious and wants to see what's inside that machine. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to research it, said Jack. His hand shook as he flipped through the pages of the ocean book. He's so nervous that his hands are shaking like this. Ah. He found a picture of an octopus and read aloud. The octopus tends to be gentle, shy creature. Sometimes, though, curiosity gets the best of it and it comes out hiding. Oh, that's why it came out, because it was curious about the submarine, so it came out. Ah, see, I told you, he's shy, said Annie. She yelled at the octopus, hi, I'm Annie. He's Jack. Oh, brother, said Jack. He read further, but the octopus has huge strength, meaning it's very, very strong. Each of its arms or tentacles has many suckers, which act like rubber suction cups. It is nearly impossible to free an object from their grasp. So once the suckers are on the submarine or on something, mm -mm, trouble. It is very hard to escape. 
Oh, great, said Jack. We'll never get rid of this thing. Just then, Jack felt a drop hit his arm. Water. Oh, no. Little drips of water is coming down. It's hitting him. He looked at the ceiling. Uh-oh, said Annie. A thin crack ran along the ceiling. Smaller cracks branched out from it. Water dripped from the cracks. We found the cracks, said Annie. The octopus better let go before the whole ceiling breaks, said Jack. Let go, please, please, Annie shouted at the octopus. The creature blinked as if it was trying to understand her. What is she trying to say to me, he's thinking. Please, 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 Annie shouted. Come on, Annie, said Jack. It doesn't care if you're polite. The octopus blinked at Jack. Get out of here, Jack yelled at it. Now, beat it, get out, scram, go. The octopus shot a cloud of black liquid into the water and disappeared into the dark cloud. Its long tentacles trailed through the water. Oh, it does that when it gets scared. It squirts out the ink. The mini sub started to rise slowly again. Aw, you hurt his feelings, Annie said. I don't think so. Something bothered Jack. He looked back at the ocean book. He read to himself. The octopus squirts black ink to escape its enemies. One of its main enemies is a shark. Oh no, do you think it's a shark? And that's why it shot it, it uh, shoot it out the ink? Oh no. Oh, oh no, said Jack. What's wrong, said Annie. Jack looked out the window. The water was growing clear again. A shadowy figure moved towards the mini sub. What is that? whispered Annie. The fish was way bigger than the dolphins, and it had a very weird head. Jack could feel his heart nearly stop. A hammerhead shark, he breathed. We're really in trouble now. You see the hammerhead shark right here? It's called a hammerhead because the head right here, do you see? It's got two eye one eye here, one eye in the eye on the other side of the um, of the um, head and the mouth is down here somewhere. It looks like a hammer, right? Like something you would use to um, put down a nail. You can actually see right here on this side. Let me point to it. Right there. You can see its eye. You see it right there? There's his eye. It's got one eye on each side of the hammer head or of the thing. Chapter 7. Remain calm. The shark swam behind the coral. Where did it go? said Annie, peering out the window. It doesn't matter, said Jack. We have to get to the top. More water's coming in, said Annie. Yeah, I know. Come on, come on, faster, Jack ordered the mini sub. Even more water's coming in now, Annie. Lots more. Jack looked up. The water wasn't dripping now. Now it was Birding. Wow, now it's just like spraying in. A few seconds, a few seconds, said Jack. Suddenly, the mini sub burst out of the water. It bobbed on the waves like a cork. The ocean sparkled all around. Oh, good, they're safe. Save at last, shouted Annie. Jack felt the water rising around his bare feet. Oh, no, now the water's coming up from the bottom of the submarine. Uh, not really safe, he said. Oops, said Annie. The octopus must have made cracks with the bottom, too. The water was up to their ankles now. Jack looked out. He saw the reef in the distance. The sub can make it. It doesn't look that far, he said. Go, 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 said Annie. She pressed one of the steering keys. Suddenly, the screen went blank. The computer broke. That's not good. What's happening, said Jack. Annie pressed a key again, then Jack pressed the other pictures. Nothing happened. It's dead, said Annie. Oh, great, said Jack. Now the water was up to their knees. I guess we'll have to swim, said Jack. He took a deep breath. <gasps> right, said Annie. It's a good thing we have swimming lessons this summer. Right, said Jack, and it's a bad thing we just saw a shark. That's not good. I do not want to go swimming with sharks. Dolphins, maybe. Sharks, no. Octopuses, no. Jack quickly found the pictures of the shark in his book. He read out loud. If you ever see a shark in the water, don't splash. Swim calmly away. 
Jack looked closely at the book. We better do the breast stroke, he said, or said Annie, so we won't splash. Yep, and stay close, said Jack. Very close, said Annie. Her eyes were wide, but she seemed very calm. Jack took a deep breath. He tried to be calm too. He calmly took off his glasses. He calmly put them and the book into his pack. He calmly put his pack on his back. Annie opened the hatch. Be calm, said Annie. She slipped out of the mini sub. Help, Jack said calmly. He held his nose and then he calmly lowered himself into the ocean. So here they are. Here's a submarine. Can you see it? And here are, there's Annie over here. Jack is coming out of the, um, out of the submarine right here. And all the way back here, right here. Do you see the treehouse? So they have to swim from here all the way over here. It doesn't look very far, but it is very far. Because look how small the treehouse is. Okay, so that tells us it's kind of far. But hopefully they can swim across it. Oh, no. And then there's a shark. Eek. Boo, boo, boo. Chapter 8. Swim for your life. Jack moved his arms slowly. He moved his legs slowly. He gently pushed the water out of his way as he did the breast stroke. Calm. Be calm, he told, he told himself. Annie swam beside him. They headed for the reef. All was calm. Then Jack saw something out of the corner of his eye. A dark fin was zigzagging through the water. And it was coming towards them. Boop. Jack wanted to splash. He wanted to yell, but he remembered, stay calm. I better not tell Annie, he thought. She will stay calmer if she doesn't know. He began to swim faster. Then faster, Annie went faster too. They both swam as fast and as calmly as they could. Sometimes Annie went even faster than Jack, which made him swim even faster and faster. Jack was so scared that he wasn't tired at all. He was swimming for his life and for Annie's life too. He didn't look back to see if the shark was still there. He did not want to know. He just kept his eye on the treehouse in the distance and he kept swimming. Remember what, what his doing always say? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Jack and Annie swam and swam and swam. It took forever for the treehouse to get just a little closer. Jack realized the reef was further away than he had thought. He kept swimming, but his arms and legs felt heavy. He's getting tired. Annie was struggling too. Float, she said, float. Jack and Annie turned onto their backs. They floated the way they had learned in swim class. We'll just rest for a minute, Jack thought. Then we'll keep going. But the more the Jack floated, the more tired he felt. Soon he was so tired even to float, he started to sink. Then he felt something. His heart stopped. Something pushed him in the water. It was slippery and alive. Had the hammerhead caught up with them? Jack closed his eyes and waited for the worst. He waited and waited. Finally, he opened his eyes. In front of him was a shiny gray head, a dolphin's head. The dolphin pushed Jack with its nose. It made happy clicking sound. Hooray, cried Annie. Jack looked over at her. She was clinging to the fin of another dolphin. Her dolphin was moving through the water. Jack grabbed the fin of his dolphin. Then the two dolphins swam smoothly through the water, pulling Jack and Annie towards the reef. So this is the picture they have in the book. Here are Jack and Annie holding on to the fins of the dolphin. Uh, kind of like this in the front picture. Do you see? It's kind of easier to see with the color. The sun is in the background and they're holding on to the fin of the dolphin. And they're kind of like surfing or riding a boat in the water. So that's what they're doing. The dolphin is saving them. Ouch! Chapter 9. The sun shone on the water, or on the ocean water. It sparkled like a diamond. Jack felt safe now. His dolphin was taking good care of him. 
The dolphins slowed down as they neared the reef. Jack lowered his feet. He felt the bumpy coral. He let go of the dolphin's fin and stood up in the water. Annie stood too. Then he threw her arms around her dolphin and gave her a big hug. Thank you, Suki, she cried. Then she kissed the dolphin's nose. Suki tossed her head and clicked at Annie. Kiss him now, Annie told Jack. You're nuts, said Jack. But Sam nuzzled Jack's head, and then he put his flippers around Jack's neck. Jack couldn't resist. He threw his arms around the dolphin and gave him a quick kiss. Sam nodded and made clicking sounds like laughter. Then he turned to Suki. The two dolphins chattered to each other for a moment. They nodded at Jack and Annie and swam grace gracefully away. Bye, Suki. Bye, Sam, Annie shouted. Thanks, Jack shouted. The dolphins leaped high into the air. Then they dove back into the water with a splash. Jack and Annie laughed. I wish we could swim like that, said Jack. Jack and Annie watched the dolphins until they disappeared. I miss them already, Annie said softly. Me too, said Jack. He sat down in the shallow water. I'm really tired, he said. Annie sat beside him. Me too, she said. The warm water lapped around their shorts and t-shirts. Jack pulled the rest, uh, pulled off his backpack. He took out his glasses and he put them on. They were blurry with water. Guess what, said Annie. What, said Jack. I saw the shark when we were swimming, Annie said, but I didn't tell you. I wanted you to stay calm. Jack stared at her. I saw it too. I just swam faster so you could swim faster. I guess we swam double fast then, Jack said. He shook his head with wonder. Now what, said Annie. We go home, said Jack. But we haven't solved Morgan's riddle yet, said Annie. Jack sighed. He pulled his notebook out of his pack and it was soaked. He pulled out the ocean book. It was soaked too. We failed, he said. My research is all wet. We'll never be the master librarian now. Jack put everything away. Let's go, he said sadly. He stood up, then he started across the pink reef towards the treehouse. Annie followed him. Ouch, said Annie. What's wrong? Jack looked back. I stepped on something. Annie bent down to rub her foot. What? said Jack. A shell? Yeah, this. She picked up a large gray shell. Boy, is it rough. Rough and gray as a rock. And as plain as plain can be. That was one of their clues. Remember, my friends? A plain and plain as plain can be, whispered Jack. They have found the answer. The shell looked like a clam shell, only bigger and with more ridges. How could this ugly shell be the answer to the riddle, said Annie. What about the part that says, there's great beauty in me? Wait. Research, said Jack. He opened up the soaked ocean book. The pages were stuck together, but he was able to turn a few pages. He found a picture of a gray shell, and then he read, Divers search for oysters in deep water, but sometimes oysters wash up on reefs or beaches. Inside some oysters, you can find a pearl. The pearl's natural beauty makes it a treasure. It must have a pearl inside, said Jack. Annie peered here. Yeah, you can look at the picture while I'm reading here. I'll turn it so you can look at the picture as I'm reading. Annie peered into the crack between the two halves of the shell. I can't see anything. She said, how does a pearl get in there anyway? Jack read aloud from the wet page. Sometimes a grain of sand will get stuck between the oyster shell and its skin. This irritates the oysters, so it makes a pearly material to surround the grain sand. In this way, uh, in this way, over a few years, a pearl is formed. I can't tell if there's a pearl in there or not, said Annie. Maybe we should bang it against a rock, said Jack. Now that would really irritate the oyster, said Annie. Yeah. Maybe we should just leave it alone, said Annie. She gently put the oyster back in the water. But how will we know if the oy if oyster is the right answer to the riddle, said Jack. 
Morgan will, said we will know, said Annie. Come on. Jack pushed his glasses into place, and then he and Annie picked up their shoes and socks. They climbed through the window of the treehouse. Morgan's stroll was lying on the floor. It was open. Look, said Annie. She and Jack stared at the scroll. The riddle had faded away. In its place was one shimmering silver word. Oyster. <gasps> Morgan's magic, whispered Annie. Morgan let, uh, Jack let out a huge sigh. We got it right, he said. And here's the Pennsylvania book, said Annie. Let's go home. She opened up the, the book. She pointed the picture of Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, she said. And the wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. The wind blew harder and harder. And then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10, The True Pearl. Dawn light slanted into the treehouse. No time at all had passed since they had left. Day was breaking, meaning the sun was still coming out. Jack rolled up the ancient scroll. He tucked it into the corner. We solved the first riddle, he said. Three more to go. I don't see another scroll, said Annie. Maybe tomorrow we will get the next riddle. That's okay, said Jack. I think we need to rest. And to dry out. Remember, they were swimming. So their clothes and their shoes and their socks are soaked. His t-shirt and shorts were soaked. His backpack, too. Only his shoes and socks were dry. Oops, I was wrong. And this needs to dry out, too, said Annie. He put the wet ocean book into the patch of sunlight. Then Jack and Annie climbed down the ladder. They walked through the woods, through leafy shadows and golden light. They left the woods and started down the street. You know, we should have found the answer to the riddle right away, said Jack. The oyster was on the reef all along. I know, but we wouldn't have had so much fun, said Annie. Fun, said Jack. You call being squeezed by an octopus and chased by a shark fun? Don't forget the dolphins, Annie said, simply. Here they are walking back to their home. Jack smiled. Right, he said. The dolphins made up for everything. They were fun. I guess they were the true pearl and the oyster, said Annie. Yep, said Jack. I wonder what Sam is doing right now. Sam? Annie grinned at him. You're nuts, she said. They climbed their steps and went into their house. We're back, Annie shouted. Did you get your shoes wet? Their mom called. Not one bit, called Jack. And he and Annie slipped up the stairs to change their clothes. That is the end of our adventure, my friends. Wasn't that a great book? That was a great part. Jack said it was worth it all was when they went swimming, uh, when the dolphins, Sam and Suki, 